Hello, bookworms! Welcome back to our channel. I'm Icy. And I'm Ivy. It's been so long! It's been three months since we last uploaded. uploaded. We decided to do a catch up or wrap up August to September. I think August to September. August. August, September, October. It's a lot of books. So, where have we been? <laughs> so, yeah, we haven't been uploading because we're busy on weekends and tired because I have class on Saturdays so I couldn't shoot yeah, on Sunday shoot. it's supposed to be rest day and bottom she's line we were, tired. we're just always tired I work full time from Monday to Friday and then sometimes we have something on Saturday and then Sunday is the only day of rest for us we have to do chores to adulthood it's not fun we have to find time for when we're both available. <laughs> As you can see, new setup. Because we have a light ring, she'll put a photo somewhere of our new light ring. Which is amazing because we don't have to worry about shooting during the day where the lighting's better. And now it's currently 6.20 in the afternoon and then the sun's about to set. And without this light ring, it would be dark. Beautiful lighting. Very Shoot anytime. Nice. Yes. Anyway, on to our catch up. On to our August to October catch up. So, in total, how many have you read? From August, I have to refer to my Goodreads history. So, I've read eight books, including the saga volumes one to eight. And how many books have you read? So, I read 10 books from August to October. Okay, so I love the site. In Thunderhead series by Neil Shusterman. I decided to borrow the Unwind series from the library. It's a really unsettling book because it's about this world where parents can get rid of their children by sending them to organ harvesting places. Yeah, it's pretty disturbing. It's really disturbing. I, I don't think I finished it. It was good writing, good plot, good concept. Neil Shusterman. Mm. Different perspectives, but the plot was just, I just, uh, yeah, I couldn't do it. I gave it three stars, but I think I should give it more because it was just the plot that threw me off. The fact that it threw me off meant that it had like a compelling and emotionally, what do you call this? It had a strong plot. I probably wouldn't finish it and read the succeeding books, but I probably would recommend if you're into that thing. And Neil Shusterman is it's one of the best writers for me. So I've read Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. It's about three siblings who were separated, adopted by different families, and they found each other. It's kind of the feels books. Is it like Adam Silvera's writing or John Green? It feels like an adult book because it didn't have the elements of the young adult contemporary stuff. Maybe it's because of the family. Yeah, the family vibe. It was pretty good. I gave it a 5 stars. But I really liked it. It deserves the 5 stars. <laughs> it has a 4.31 rate star rating on Goodreads. Second book I've read in the month of August is Circe by Madeline Miller, which I finally got my hands on. It's about one of the daughters of the Titans, but she is not as popular as the Greek gods that we know. We follow Circe and all of the stuff that happens in her life and I just like how Madeline Miller wrote everything like it was so convincing because when I was reading Norse mythology by Neil Gaiman, I love Neil Gaiman as an author but the Norse mythology book was kind of like childlike. Like Magnus Chase? <laughs> no, not really. Madeline Miller's writing is more real. I felt like it was more mature to me than the Norse mythology. I can't wait to read some of it, Chili's. I gave it a 5 out of 5 rating because of the good writing, the great portrayal of Circe. The language it used is very eloquent. The way she describes things, it's so easy to understand. It sounds so out of my reach, but I still... I was like so enchanted. Enchanting! Just gonna... <laughs> she yes. keeps 
just leaving because we're cooking our dinner for tonight. Anyway, and my second book for August is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Like, so it's about a girl named Aza who has um, OCD. Yeah, it was a pretty quick read. And is it an easy read? Yeah, it's kind of an easy read, but it's the kind of book that doesn't stick to you forever. Like, you know what I mean? Didn't have that... Um, I don't even remember what happened in the, this book, so... It's okay, I guess. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I loved um, John Green's writing style, but I guess it just lacked that. <laughs> I want to read that too, but I want to read books that are... That have... <coughs> and will make me go. Next book I read was the 13th book of the Sigma 4 series, which is an, an, a young adult book. It's an adult fiction by James Rowlands. And as you know, what got me started into reading was James Rowlands Sigma 4 series. Like I said, James Rowlands has this talent of mixing science, history, military, fiction, pinch of romance into books. and. All his books have the concept of the world ending. There's this special government age, secret government agency that stops all that from happening, which is like going on an adventure. And this book is set in Hawaii. In this book, you'll go to Japan, Hawaii. I, f I forgot other places, but it's a good book. Very action-packed from the first chapter on until the last. As per usual, I gave it a 5 out of 5. The average rating is 4.22. I would recommend this to Dan Brown's fans. And moving on to September, I've read History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. I read it too, so we can kind of talk about it. It's about these two young teenage boys who started out as friends and then ended up going out with each other and then college time approached and then one of them got into college in a different state. He ended up getting into an accident and passing away. And then his ex-boyfriend who's back home learned about it and then the funeral and stuff. He meets the new boyfriend and then they develop a... I don't know what kind of relationship that is. It's quite a tad bit heavy on the feels. Yeah, I was reading the first few pages so sad. I can feel myself tearing up, but uh, but I was in a public place, so gotta stay strong. <laughs> Just the way Adam Silvera wrote it, oh, so heartbreaking. If you want a sad read, go for it. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna cry, if you... It's kind of like yeah. looking for Alaska. But it's more uh, sad. It focuses on the complexities of coping with loss. So I gave it a 4 out of 5. Four too. The storytelling was good. Yeah. Good writing, good description, the narrative was clear. There are some books where you, you read it and you, you think, is this a flashback or a monologue or is this happening right, happening right now? But this one was good because the chapters were divided into flashback and then person play, flashback person play. Yeah. The next book I read is The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. I like The Little Mermaid and I thought this would be a really, really good retelling. It wasn't good. I love the cover. Yeah, the cover, the cover captivated me. I was like, ooh. It only has a, an average rating of 3.64, which is still pretty good for a book like this. <laughs> <laughs> Did it deserve like lower? I think so. I only gave it a 2. Because of the cover <laughs> and the concept. Yeah, there are feminist ideas, but the men characters in this book were just too much. Is it like misogyny? Kind of. Good? The father, Abusive. father mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot his name. Triton? No, that's the little mermaid. Uh. King something. The king of the mermaids. He only favors like the beautiful daughters and he has like eight daughters. And he only favors the good-looking good looking and talented ones. And they're not supposed to talk. So they're just supposed to look pretty. And then there was this part where the little mermaid said, Oh, we're not supposed to eat much because we might get fat and undesirable. <gasps> and they put like pearls on their tails. And even when it bleeds, as long as it's pretty, you, you shut up. And then she got betrothed to this soldier. I don't know if he was a soldier. It was like her dad's age. And she was only 15 in the book and the guy's like 16. Yeah. I didn't 
like how she fell in love with that human. It was like an insta insta the, romance. The Eric of the Yeah, Eric. his name's Oliver here. Okay. Mm. The writing was okay. Very simple. Not compelling enough. It was just good thing I didn't DNF it because it only was two hundred pages. <laughs> but it took you so long to finish it. <laughs> I know, because it's not fun! I think you were reading it along with something. I listened to the audiobook of Harry Potter. So, Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire. I read all of them, I think, in two weeks. Because she listened. He's not read. <laughs> it's the same! I listen to this while I drive to and from class. Of course, I don't have to say what's it about. Everyone yeah, knows this. Knows. The audiobooks were read by Stephen Fry. And his wow. narration is... Isn't he the wow. author of... Yeah, the mythos. I want to read that too. Yeah, his narration is the best. I was hooked into it. I loved it. I gave it all of them of five stars. So I really should read You can't them. really say anything else. I I'm, became a Potterhead. I've only watched <laughs> the movies. Yeah. But the I, movies were good. Were I probably would listen to the really? books too. I need to watch the movies again so that I could compare. But the book was better. <laughs> Next book for me was Renegades by Marissa Mayer. So I love Marissa Mayer's The Lunar Chronicles. I read them all last year from Cinder to Winter. So good. I love how she retold those fairy tales. So this one was a bit different. It's about where people are grouped into superheroes and villains and common people. It felt like it was like X-Men but not really. Like people with superpowers. And then there's this corporation. They're pretty much like the government. It wasn't as good as I would hope but I still like Marissa Mayer. Well, good, good try, good try. <laughs> I like her fairy tale retellings better. I gave it a four star. I don't know why. Maybe because I like the protagonist, Nova. Nova something. I liked how she was badass. Badass. And Marissa Mayer's writing is good as well. But I, I like her fairy tale retellings better than the superhero ones. But I'm, I'm not saying that she should stick to this, the fairy tale retellings. But there's still potential there. <laughs> because it's Marissa Mayer, I gave it a 4. When I was listening to Harry Potter, when I want to read a physical book, I was reading Life Like by J. Kristoff. What's that side? Because I've heard that this book is kind of similar to... What's his other book? Number 9? Never Night, but young adult genre. I don't know, it's about his writing style. I didn't find Never Night good. That's why I didn't bother reading the <laughs> So rude. I love the Illumine series, but there's something about this book. It's kind of like everywhere. It wasn't told on one person's perspective. It keeps switching. So I was like confused who's was talking. Who's narrating or something. Wait, I haven't explained what, what it's about. So it's kind of like way ahead in the future where global warming's taking over everything. There's no the, more plants. Yeah, no more plants. Everything is like desert. The ocean is like so black and full and of then, oil. There's like robots and animals turn into robots as well. They're like all mechanic and stuff. And it's about a girl who half robot. She's like android. I've heard that they were saying if you love Cinder, then you love this. Also, I was like, oh, yes, yes. But mm, there's just something wrong. Your ex like, high expectation. <laughs> yeah, I had high high expectations before I started reading this. So, yeah, but I we are it. in no way dissing the authors. Yes, it's the books. We personally did not. Sorry if you loved it, but I didn't. But I gave it a 3. I'm just generous with my stars. I think I would have given it a She two. gives an extra star for effort. <laughs> the next book is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas because we thought the movie was coming out soon. But it won't be out in Australia until next month, which is January. So I thought, Toink. Yeah, I was like so she excited was, about it. She was, I was like, she really, was really, forcing me really to read before it. the <clears throat> movie comes out. Because we saw Christine from Poland Bananas Books post a video, like a behind the scenes video of booktubers. Because she was an extra. Booktubers playing high schoolers in that movie. So we assumed that, oh my god, it might come out September. And yeah, this was hurry, like, hurry, read it. I even borrowed was, it for her. <laughs> 
Yeah, sure. I would. It's about Black Lives Matter. It was very compelling too because you see this stuff in the news. Like people of a certain color getting shot by police in the States. It brings you the realities of what happens in places where these things are common, like the States. I only see these things in the news and then forget about it the next day. Or see it on Facebook where people share stuff. Not really think of the impacts of shootings on people who were actually physically there and how the police and investigations happen and it makes it look like the people of a certain color are at fault for being shot it really puts that into perspective the author was really good in getting those points across and i like the narrative very strong emotions how her rights were suppressed by the police and she was like, oh my god, do I say something? Do I not say something? She was like in two different worlds. She lives in the ghetto, and but she goes to school in a different area where there's rich people. She was kind of torn between two worlds where she needs to speak up for people in her community who are innocent but the police are judgmental towards them. But risking her clean, drama-less reputation in her school. I read it last year, so I was excited that the we might do a, a book movie review. Should be good. Yeah, I gave it a four star. It's a good book, but it's not like something I would force people to read. Like I did with Scythe and Thunderhead and Gemini. In the month of October, I read Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. Matthew Quick, my favorite writer. His books are very underrated. What's his other book? Silver Linings. This book was quite different from the other books I read like The Star. Sort of like a rock star and Boy 21. Leonard Peacock character in this book is just the trigger warning suicide violence. I started reading it not expecting it to be this intense. I was just shocked in the first few chapters. I killed myself. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, what? Why? Why? All throughout the book, it explains why he wants to, to end his life. It's not like 13 No, no, no. It's more like intense. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was a quick read. Mm. I don't know if I would recommend. But it's a young adult book. Yeah, it's a young adult. I was like, what? But I recommend Matthew Quick's other books. I other gave it a books. 4 out of 5 stars. So there's a total star rating of 3.92 stars. That's star. pretty low. So the last book that I've read in October is the Saga series. Volumes 4 to 6. So the saga series is about... I don't even know how to explain. <laughs> it's a graphic novel by Brian K. Vogel and Fiona Staples as the artist. The good illustrations. Yeah. It's very graphic. Yeah. Don't bring this book to work, guys. <laughs> yeah, don't read it in public. I read the first few volumes last year. It was book one volumes 1 to 3. I loved it and then I couldn't find the succeeding volume so I did something else last year. <laughs> I was watching booktube videos about something that reminded me, oh I should continue reading. And then she forced me to read it. Yeah. Volume 9 just came out a few months ago and I haven't read it yet. And we'll talk about that in our next video. Yeah. <laughs> volumes 4, 5, 6, 5 stars obviously. So that's our August to October wrap up and we'll do a November wrap up soon. We'll see you on our next video. Have you read the books we've read? What are your and thoughts? share your thoughts. Share your thoughts down below. It doesn't matter if we have the same thoughts or conflicting. It, it's good to have a discussion. Yeah. Like and subscribe. See you soon. See you.